purchased the KM100, but um, it brought it was brought to my attention that a lot of the people who sold it to you didn't really break down how the how it works. Okay, so that's when I decided to do a top ten questions of the week of the KM100, and it's just a compilation of questions that I received from my clients, and I'm just sharing with you this information that they asked me. Okay. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Curtis Harden. I'm an official Alltel Diagnostic Consultant. If you would like to purchase your tool and get my one-on-one -on -one support, go to alltelltech.co.za. All right. Now, question number one. If I already own the IN508, do I need the KM100? Okay. So the 508 is a fantastic full tool. Out the box, I would give it a level four out of five. All right in terms of its overall key coding. Now, if you are not using or not in need of creating universal keys and chips to work on different cars, um, you know, having the ability to make the transponder simulation and editing and having ignition, ignition testing and cloning, if your current operation doesn't require you to do this, you don't need to have it, all right? But what you could think about acquiring the KM100 would be, it would be like a good addition. So what the IM508 can't do, this would supplement for it. And in certain, certain situations, you may not want to take out your massive key coding device. You want something small, okay? So it really just depends on your needs, okay? Question number two, can you explain these functions in detail? All right, so, Universal transponder key generation. So if you, you know, lost or damaged the, a key or your customer, the K100 will allow you to generate a new key right on the spot. Okay, and you can see here, he pops it right in there, generates universal key, and you're pretty much good to go, all right? Second, we have cloning. All right, so I call this two-click cloning. Very simple to do, the K100 makes it easy as clicking a button. All right, you can see that there. All right, very simple to do. And then we have the test ignition coil. So this is a huge time saver because I'm sure we all have been in situations where we're trying to register a key. And if we could have the capability to just to test the ignition coil, it would have saved us a lot of time and headache, okay? So this is actually a really, really good uh, feature to have, all right? Then we have transponder simulation. So this allows the K100 to emulate a transponder chip, all right? So in layman's terms, it can mimic the behavior of a vehicle's key transponder. All right, you can see here, you can start the car with the device. All right, pretty cool. Now, question number three, what are the smart key variations? So we have the Razor, and I would say the Razor is more designed for like your luxury vehicles. If you fix somebody's car or you're trying to register their, uh, their key and they have a nice car, you don't want to give them a crappy looking key. You want to give them something, you know, premium. So that's what this range is for. Then we have the premium section this is like your workhorse you know they they have a very good quality key lots of coverage all right we're talking about over 700 vehicles and uh it's it's a good key very very good good key then we have your standard range so this is kind of like your bread and butter um it, it's capable of a, of a wide range of vehicles and it just gets the job done okay and here's a image of all the different uh, collections we have, the Razor Premium and the Standard. All right, question number four. I just tried using the K100 to add a key to my car. The key itself works like a charm, starts the car and everything, but the remote functions are not working. I've even double checked Autel's vehicle coverage page and it says remote functions should be good to go after the key is added what gives all right so after checking you can see here 
when you add a key to this vehicle, remote learning is not required, okay? However, if the K100 fails to do this relearning process, it's probably often because the ID authentication box is in the remote, they're not seeing eye to eye, okay? Now, the way to resolve this is by using the IM508 or IM608 because they have a feature called synchronized ID authentication function, okay? Which essentially forces a handshake between the two. The two. So the function route, you're gonna click Start, Emo, Lexus, click System Selection, Keyless Systems, Keyless System Can, and then you're gonna see click ECU Synchronization Learning. Okay, and that's gonna take you to the synchronized ID authentication box. Okay, question number five. I was browsing Autel's official website and came across the KM100, KM100E and the KM100X. I'm a bit confused. Can you please break this down for me? All right, so the KM100 has been issued to local distributors. So some are physical establishments that have an online platform, okay? Um, I would recommend getting it from those uh, establishments just because you're guaranteed to have some support. You're going to have troubles with this thing, whether it's software or hardware related. The other two, the K100E and the K100X, um, as far as I can, uh, based on my research, their software is pretty much the same in hardware. But these are just dedicated to online retailers. So the price might be cheaper, but your support is probably non-existent. Okay, so just keep keep that in mind. Question number four or six. Does the K100 work with newer fours that have the CAN FD system? It's a very good question. So CANFD stands for Controller Area Network Flexible Data, okay? And it's essentially an extension of the previous CAN protocol designed to deliver faster data trans transi transmission rates and greater data payload per frame. So a lot of these newer vehicles are going to have this, and this was our old setup, okay? A lot of the older generation Autels didn't have this programmer uh, not programmer, adapter capability embedded into it. Okay, that's the KNFD adapter. But the KM100 comes with uh, this protocol already in it. All right, so to answer your question, you will be able to have access to those vehicles because the KNFD protocol is um, built in this VCI. All right, so Number seven, can you explain the functions on the main menu? All right, so here, this is the transponder slot. It reads and writes transponder chips. This antenna here, it's a low frequency detection collector, collects low frequency data. Then we have the universal key, programs all the Altel universal keys. Then we have the transponder function, performs transponder generation and simulation conversion between the ID63 and ID83. Then we have the EMO, which launches the immobilizer function. The vehicle key slot reads key information and measures remote frequency. The reading slash cloning function reads and clones transponders information. Frequency detection collector detects the frequency of the smart keys and the special functions provides access to specialized operations. All right, question number eight. Will the XP400 Pro work with the KM100? It's a hard no, okay? You need the IM508 or the IM608. All right, you gotta step up your game, all right? Question number nine, can you explain the menu functions when reading a chip? All right, so chip type. All right, this is a specific type of transponder chip used in the key, all right? Next we have emo type. So if you look on the right of it where it says uh, 
H I tag, Hi tag, okay? This refers to a specific type of immobilizer technology used in the ID 464 in brackets here. All right, this is an identifier for the technology in the BMW, okay? Transponder ID. This is kind of like, I don't know, like a serial number, okay? Um, it's a unique identification number for the transponder chip. Locking status, this will let you know if it's locked, if the key is locked or unlocked. And the code mode refers to an encoding scheme used by the transponder chip to communicate to the vehicle's immobilizer, okay? And on the right where it says Manchester code, this is just a common encoding method, all right? And the last one, you can barely see it. It's encryption, encrypt mode. So this indicates the key uses an additional layer of, uh, of security through encryption, okay? And then number 10, understanding the ID632 IDA3, okay? And the question is, I noticed that K100 has a feature for converting between the ID63 and ID83 for transponder. Can you break down how it works and why it's useful? All right. So as you can see here, we have the ID63 transponder and the ID83 transponder, all right? So these are two types of transponders commonly used in Fords, okay? Now, while they serve the same purpose, they are not inherently compatible with each other. So why would you need to convert them? So on some of the older Fords, they might use the ID63 and the newer ones might use the ID83. So the feature on the K100 allows you to convert between the two seamlessly, making sure more versatile and, and, and comprehensiveness. So like, let me give you an example. All you do when you enter that function, you place whatever transponder uh, on the designated slot, and then you're going to initiate the operation by simply tapping the start conversion. Okay, so that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation. And uh, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.